So for our next lesson, and you may have noticed that I've started uh, numbering these so we can keep track of what we've covered before. But what I'd like to talk about today is calculating the undivided interest royalty. Um, in our last lesson, we talked about if someone was a 100% owner in the property. But let's say, for example, that Mike Brady, y'all remember the Brady Bunch, let's say that Mike Brady owns 100% interest, uh, which, which sometimes we call 100% uh, fee simple, sometimes we call it fee simple absolute, but it's really the same thing. Um, so he owns 100% fee simple absolute, or fee simple, which means he owns the surface plus the minerals. And let's say that he, so he's the 100% owner, let's say that he decides to convey his property to his three sons. We're going to leave poor Marsha and Jan and Cindy out in the cold here. So he's going to leave it to Greg, to Peter, and to Bobby. But he's not going to leave it to them equally. He's going to leave it to Greg, 50%, Peter, 30% and that leaves 20% for Bobby. So what this means is that let's say that Mike owns a 640 acre, 640 acres. This means that none of the kids own a part of the southeast or the southwest or they don't they can't specifically say what property is theirs. All they know is that they have a 50% share in all of the acres. So I had a lady call me one time and she said, I want to leave, you know, she owned an undivided interest in some property. I want to leave two acres out of my 30% to my daughter. Well, ma'am, you can't do that because you don't own two acres. You own 50% of every acre in there, but you cannot convey two acres. So Greg can't say, I'm going to leave my property in, in this particular quarter, in the southeast, southwest quarter, to so-and-so. He, he doesn't own in the southwest quarter. He owns an undivided interest, and that's why we call it an undivided interest, because you cannot divide it. So in terms of calculating an undivided interest, Greg is a 50% um, owner, or he owns 50%, and these people are called co-tenants, by the way, co-tenants. So each co-tenant owns a different share. So before there is an oil and gas lease, Greg owns a 50% working interest, Peter owns a 30% working interest, and Bobby owns a 20% working interest. Now, uh, working interest, uh, these these are the people that pay the bills. So if they wanted to drill a well on their property, Greg would have 50%, Peter would have 30%, and Bobby would have 20%. Now some people, it helps them if they think about this as a JIB or a joint interest billing, what we call. And then the net revenue interest, that is the profits. That's what you're going to get. Um, they, some people like to refer to that or think of that as the division order side of it. Okay, so before the lease, they each own 50%, 30%, and 20% working interest, and before the lease, they also own the net revenue interest, so a 50% net revenue interest, 30% net revenue interest, and 20% net revenue interest. Well, let's say that Resource Oil and Gas comes up to them and says, hey, we want to give you a 1 eighth royalty in this property. Well, we know that if they convey their one-eighth royalty, if they grant a lease, they're giving away their working interest. We talked about that in, in lesson two. So after the lease, Greg is going to own 0% of the working interest, Peter's going to own 0% of the working interest, and Bobby is going to own 0% of the working interest. But what they will own collectively, if it's a one-eighth lease, they will own a 0.125 net revenue interest, which leaves the lessee with a 0.875 net revenue interest and a 100% working interest. Okay, Collectively, 
collectively they own a 0.125. But how do we figure out what they each own individually? What is their decimal interest going to be on the division order? So let's do that calculation. Erase my scrabble scrabble here. Okay. Well, that calculation is going to be if they would if they collectively own a 0.125, then Greg is going to get a 50% of that 0.125. Peter is going to get 30% of that 0.125. And Bobby is going to get 20% of that 0.125. So their decimal interest would be 0 0.0625. And we're going to do 0 0.30 times 0.125 is going to be 0.0375. And then 0 0.20 times 0.125 is going to be 0 0.0250. And if we add that up, 5 and 5, I'm sorry, this isn't in order, 7, 8, 9. That is going to total 0.125. Okay, so what we would put in these blanks here is we would keep the working interest owners. Greg, Peter, and Bobby wouldn't own any of the working interest after they grant a lease, but their net revenue interest would be for Greg, it's going to be 0 0.0625. For Peter, it's going to be 0 0.0375. And for Bobby, it's going to be a point zero two five zero, and that will total if you add those up to a one point one two five royalty interest. So all you're really doing is multiplying their royalty interest times their what we call their mineral interest. So they each own a fifty percent mineral interest, thirty percent, twenty percent, and that is how you calculate the undivided interest owner. I hope this was helpful. Please leave some comments. Uh, if you could give me some, uh, just some feedback. Is this helpful to you? Am I explaining it well? Um, is it, you know, should I make it more simple? Should I make it more complicated? Just uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Um, also, keep an eye on the University of Texas um, website for petroleum extension. It's www.pt. P-E-T-E-X, and I um, want to invite you all to take my online course there. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next class.